I'm making a video today that I'm going to call the Noob's Guide to Modifying a First Generation Nissan Xterra. First Generation meaning the model year 2000 to 2004. Now over the years I've been quite involved in clubxterra.org and xterranation.org, those are message boards and forums, and reading and posting. And I've spent a lot of time reading, watching YouTube videos, crawling under my own truck to figure out what I wanted to do with my truck. Now on the message boards, you realize that the same questions get asked multiple times. And this video is actually based off of a post that I made. And I've copied and pasted in response to other people asking the same question, which is basically, I just got my new-to-me Nissan Xterra, and I want to modify it, but I don't know where to start. So here are my tips for the noob that want to modify their Nissan Xterra. Tip number one is to get rid of the stock step rails. They're thin-walled aluminum. They offer you no protection. Visually, having things hanging down from your vehicle make it look lower to the ground, even if you haven't changed that ride height. They're simple to unbolt from the frame rails. They come right off. Now, if you actually go off-roading and you hit them on a tree stump or on a rock or anything, they're going to give you no protection. They'll actually probably kink and bend up into the bottom of your vehicle and cause more damage than if you didn't have them all together. So go ahead and just get rid of them. It's free. Now on that same line of thinking, get rid of the mud flaps that hang down behind your tires. Now there is a piece of trim on the front tires on the fender well. Leave that there, but the actual mud flap that hangs down behind the tire, get rid of it. It just takes a Phillips head screwdriver and maybe a razor blade or some wire snips to snip some plastic here and there. But less things hanging down from your vehicle make your vehicle look taller even if you don't do a lift. On top of that, if you do find yourself off-road or in the mud, you're going to want that mud spray on the side of your vehicle because that's what makes it look cool. Tip number three is, in general, avoid a bolt-on brush guard or bull bar. You know, a lot of people want that kind of aggressive off-road look, but in the off-road community, we typically call these damage multipliers. So a brush guard that just covers your headlights and your front grille, they bolt to the bottom of the frame rail, and they actually loop underneath the bumper and then come up in front. And that just gives you a lot of leverage so that if you do hit a deer or if you do hit another vehicle it's going to crunch all those tubes into your headlights and into your hood it's likely going to cause more damage and it's not going to give you real protection i will add the caveat that if you don't really think you're going to be doing a lot of off-roading and you don't really think that you're going to be getting into you know a vehicular accident sometime and you just like the way it looks i mean go for it it doesn't really hurt anything it just means that you're taking a bit of a risk and you're not giving yourself real impact protection. Real impact protection costs money. You're going to be spending almost $1,000 for a steel bumper from a reputable manufacturer. A lot of people don't want to spend that money. Tip number four is to avoid any type of computer performance chip, especially ones that advertise a lot of horsepower gains. It is not cheap to go fast. I find it better to take what your vehicle is capable of and modify that to make it even better. You can spend a lot of money on this engine trying to make it go fast and it's still not going to be that fast and you're just going to be wasting money trying to make this engine into something that it's not so my tip number five is to go for the stock airbox mod i don't recommend going for a cold air intake with an open element type filter especially if you're going to end up in the mud or off-roading the stock airbox allows you to have protection from those elements and you can also modify it to make it breathe easier so that you can get some better airflow it'll give you a nice engine growl you know, whether that increased airflow really results in usable horsepower, who really knows, but it's fun to tinker with things, so I definitely recommend that you give that a try. Tip number six, remove the rear sway bar. Sway bars are devices that basically connect the left side of the suspension to the right side of the suspension. It's supposed to improve uh, on-road streetable performance. However, a lot of the body roll on a Nissan Xterra is biased towards the front end, so I recommend leaving the front sway bar on, but the rear sway bar, get rid of it. It improves your flexibility on your rear tires. Your suspension will flex a lot easier. It's free to do, and it doesn't really impact on-road streetable driving at all. So go ahead and get rid of it, and you'll forget that it was ever even there. Tip number seven is to look into what the exterior community calls the poor man's lift, or the PML for short. You can spend a lot of money on different suspension kits that include upper control arms, new torsion bars, shocks, and all these other type of things. But if you're not going to want to spend $1,000 on a full-on suspension kit, look into the PML. The PML is where you lift the rear of the vehicle by just buying some lift shackles. Those cost about $75 from 4x4parts.com. You could also try doing the PML with the revolver shackle, which gives a similar amount of lift, 
but they actually have a hinge in the middle so you get a lot of flex as you want to make your axle droop on uneven terrain. That's a little bit more expensive, but it's worth the articulation that you get if you can swing the money. Now the front suspension on the Nissan Xterra uses a torsion bar type suspension. And I won't get into the details of that, but basically you have some adjustability built into the stock suspension. So you can raise the rear of the vehicle about an inch and a half, and you can raise the front of the vehicle about an inch and a half to match. You just got to be careful on making sure that you're still able to get an alignment, because once you adjust the suspension on the front, you got to keep your tires aligned so you don't wear them out. Tip number eight is for the more mechanically inclined, but look into doing a two inch body lift. You could also do a three inch body lift, but the two inch body lift is a little less involved and there's uh, less challenges with relocating different things. So just conceptually, a body lift is using a spacer or a puck to put into your body mount. So you're actually lifting the entire body or cab off of the frame, sliding a puck in, and then using longer bolts to fasten it all back together. Now you are spacing the body and cab away from the frame, so you gotta look out for things such as, say, the radiator hoses, where one end connects to the radiator that's attached to the body, but the other end connects to the engine that's attached to the frame. You might need to find a longer hose here or there, or you might want to relocate, say, a bracket for your power steering reservoir. I'm not gonna get into the details of how to do this lift, but you can piece together the kit to do this lift, the pucks and the bolts, for around $100. The two inch body lift also allows you to fit 33 inch tires. Tip number nine is to refresh your faded plastics. You know, any Nissan Xterra after 10 or 15 years, all the plastic bumpers and the trim pieces are gonna be faded and look really dull. Now I recommend taking the time to actually remove the bumpers and remove the grill and the rear corners and removing them from the vehicle completely. It just takes a couple basic sockets and a Phillips head screwdriver, but go ahead and remove them, lay them out on a tarp and spray paint them with some you know, rattle cans of Rust-Oleum spray on bed liner or Duplicolor bumper paint. There's a lot of different things that you can do, but do about two to three coats after you clean them up a little bit. And it's gonna make the vehicle look brand new. Now the last tip that I'm gonna give you is a general tip on approach for modifying vehicles. Don't just do a modification because I said so on YouTube or because someone said so on an internet message board. It's best to just think about what it is that you'd like for your vehicle to do and then make a plan of attack of what needs to change in order to get that new performance. You know, really take your time to learn how the vehicle works, whether that's watching these YouTube videos, whether that's going online to message boards or forums, or just talking with more experienced people in the Xterra community, or just crawling underneath your own truck and looking around to determine how it works and figure out how everything is arranged and goes together. So I hope that this video helped a couple people. If you have any specific questions on any of these modifications or you need help figuring out how to do it, let me know and I can make a video on that. So here's some bonus information for the noobs out there that want to learn more about their Nissan Xterra. First gen Nissan Xterra comes stock with a 31 inch tire. You can fit a 32 inch tire on a stock vehicle with no lift. And with a two inch body lift, you can fit 33 inch tires. One thing to point out that's kind of difficult for some people to understand is that the suspension lift technically really doesn't provide any room for larger tires. And here's why. When you do a suspension lift, you're changing the static position of your suspension. Now your control arms and your springs are still going to be able to flex while you're cornering or while you're off camber off road. And so by doing a suspension lift, you might give yourself some more clearance for larger tires at ride height when you're in the parking lot at the mall or at the grocery store. But once you go around the corner or once you flex off road, once that tire hits the full stuffage point, it's going to be hitting whatever was in the way on that fender before you did the suspension lift. Now, since the body lift moves the entire cab and fenders upwards, that means even when your tire is at full stuffage into the fender well, the body lift spaces the fenders two inches further away from that point. So you will have added clearance with the body lift at all ranges of motion in the suspension. And so that's kind of the big thing to note here is that suspension is not just static. It doesn't just sit here. It moves and it articulates up and down. So you need to make sure that you have additional clearance for larger tires all around, not just at ride height.